We have several individuals in different states who are helping us raise money. So the the, the money is coming in. We will, at the, the right time, we will have a war chest that will permit us to uh, go on television and, do, and radio and do all of those things. But until then, well, that's what I tell my viewers every day is, you know, the MSNBC, NPR, they take your money. They get taxpayer money, uh, with stimulus money over at, 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 at NBC. And then these big rich groups sit there and criticize, like when we sell books or videos to fund our show, like we're bad. that We actually fund our own operation with stuff that people need and, and free association. And, and it gets back to political campaigns of patriots like Mr. Guillory, Senator Guillory. This is a war, folks. Okay, and all these multinationals are in here buying our country up. You got to spend money and time to protect yourself. You've got to get involved and fight, just like I did 25 years ago because they were trying to pass gun bans in Texas. I never intended to be on talk radio. I didn't want to do all this. I had to do it. And 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 they say that necessity is the mother of invention. We will beat the collectivist and and, and the mafia and the criminals and the crony capitalist, but it's going to take people getting angry. And that's why we have folks on like Mr. Guillory. Because win, lose, or draw, laying down is losing, period. So whether you have zero money and spread the word about this gentleman and others, or, or whether you run for office yourself, or whether you send him $100, taking action is when we win. And that's why we're doing this. Go ahead, sir. You are so correct. Your battle in East Texas is, is our battle across this nation today. Just as you had to fight it 20 years ago, today we must fight it. And, and we don't have a choice. Our backs are absolutely against the wall. We must win this. If we do not win this battle this year, at this turning point in American history, we will go down into the valley and we cannot afford that. I owe it to my grandchild, to my grandson. You owe it to yours. We all owe it. 50 years from now, we must tell our grandchildren that we were the heroes. You and you and you and I were the heroes who turned America around and saved our great nation in 2016. I feel so sorry for, because Republicans aren't perfect, their constituents aren't perfect, they got a lot of problems. But we go down to UT and, and, and we also have correspondents in California that talk to folks. And I mean, you talk to 10 people and they say arrest all gun owners and put them in jail. And, they, and all 10 you talk to say it, or nine out of 10. You go down to UT and nine out of 10 say, I want Bernie, I want free stuff. And you're just looking at them and they just don't get it. That's not how the world works. It's, they're so sad. It's just, they're so sad. It absolutely is. If we don't get off our duffs and get our own, and that's what America is about. It's the land of opportunity. It's, it's, it's the one place on earth where you can be anything that you want. You can become anything as rich as you'd like to. It's not about getting angry with someone else because they have more money than you have. It's, this is the place where you get off your duff and work and earn yours. But now it's not like that because they take so much and select interest or exempt, like from Obamacare and General Electric from the Obama taxes on coal plants that he just lets them out of, that people don't get, hey, the free market isn't working like it used to. I'm not getting to heaven. I work hard as, like I used to. And that's because it's rigged, folks. We're going to come back with a few more minutes with State Senator Albert Guillory, albertguillory.com. And give him the floor, because I've asked a bunch of questions. I want to let him talk six, seven minutes and, and really say to you what he thinks is most important. But I tell you, you know, the breaking down the history of the Democratic Party and what it's really done and all the rest of it. I mean, if you want to say which party is the nastiest and the and the sneakiest and, and, and the most evil overall, it's got to be the Democrats, folks. I mean, they really are rotten. Coming up in the fourth hour, Anthony Gucciardi is going to be hosting. He's going to break down the latest news and premieres never before seen videos and special reports. Uh, after our guest leaves us, I'm going to play that Jakari Jackson report that he did a few days ago in the aftermath of the Iowa caucuses, where almost every person he talks to at U University of Texas says they want, f why are you voting for Bernie? Because I want free education. And then the few that are for Hillary, they just say, because she's a woman. And then another video, Joe Big Shot, that's what the women are saying. Oh, it's girl power. Girl power? Woman's owned by Goldman Sachs. It's just crazy. This identity politics at a certain point just gets, just gets crazy. And that's what the system's done is just absolutely turn the world on its head. AlbertGillery.com is the state senator's website. He's running for Congress, and he's the only guy running the spot, doing very, very well. But he needs your support because the system's going to come after him.
And the reason we have him on is he's one of the trailblazers. I don't remember, was it a year and a half ago? I forget, time flies, uh, that he left the Democratic Party in Louisiana. A bold move, uh, but he's done it, and he really points out the real history of the Democratic Party. Sir, thank you for your time. I I've been asking the questions, as I said. Uh, what else about the Democratic Party would you want to say? What else about the election, who you're liking, where you think it's going, uh, other key points you'd like to impart, sir? My, the, the biggest point that I'd like to make is that this nation sprang from the rock of, of values, is American values that got us this far and American values that will take us beyond into the future. I'll give you a couple of examples. Spending. This nation is now $19 trillion in debt. This administration, and I would, I'm, I'm, I'm angry about it, and I'm angry about the debt that's going to be left to my grandchild, but I wouldn't be quite so angry about it if it were not for the fact that much of it is being spent in foreign countries. This president does not spend that money here. He's, he's spending money building roads and bridges and, and shoring up infrastructure in foreign nations while our roads and bridges crumble, our, our infrastructure crumbles. That's, that's foolish. People in foreign workers in foreign nations are being employed. They're supporting their families while our unemployment rate is out, out the roof. Uh, we, spending is, is, is a major problem that we have. The failed foreign policy. Uh, we are less safe at home, and American interests and American lives are less safe as we are uh, in in foreign countries. That is is not good for us at all. Uh, the the gun situation. This president wants us. He wants me to have a little gun that goes pop, pop, pop while the guns of the criminals and the guns of the terrorists go boom, 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 boom. That is a simplification, but a very accurate simplification of what this administration wants when it comes to gun ownership. We cannot afford that. And prayer, of course. This nation was, was based on prayer. God got us here, and God will get us to the mountaintop. We just, we have to become a prayerful nation again. We cannot let these people come, outsiders, come into our house, into God's house and say, you cannot pray anymore. We are Americans, this is America, this is our nation. We can pray anywhere and anytime that we want to. We must become a nation of prayer again. Prayer in schools, prayer in courthouses, prayer in our homes and prayer in our hearts. And, and of course, life we must give some serious attention to what is happening in life. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting. Liberals work very hard to protect the lives of criminals who've committed murder and, and, and major crimes. They want mercy for them. Yet those same people will deny life to millions of little Americans through abortion every year. I, I, it's difficult They're for me. They're bullies. To... Yes, they are. America must choose life. Well, you're totally right. And, and just to interject, I mean, look, I, I was never a worse for the Republicans. They do a lot of bad things. You know, there's good and bad there. But, and, I, and I've been a Christian my whole life, and, and, and I've never been an unbeliever. But, you know, you, you might be 20 years old. You doubt sometimes, but you have experiences in your life and you see God come through in providence, but you also see evil in people where they'll go 100 miles to do evil instead of walking five feet to do good. They'll do bad because it's their nature, even though it would be better for them not to. And just the way they attack real Christians and are, and are pulling down the symbols and demonizing and then bringing in radical Muslims and covering up and letting them attack. And the same thing's done in Europe. It's the exact same policy, and, it's, and they actually say it. We hate Christianity. We hate the West. We want to replace it with anything we can. There is a real hatred for prosperity and goodness. And I can only describe these people that actually run things as devils. I would add one thing to that. Their attitudes toward women, toward women, it's not acceptable. Uh, I have sisters, I have daughters. Uh, 
the, the attitudes of some of the immigrants toward women, like in Germany the other day when those uh, men were grabbing and raping German women, that is not acceptable. We cannot permit people like that to come into our country. That's foolishness. Exactly. So why does the left relish doing it? And then Obama tells 30-something governors, I'm not even going to tell you who we're bringing in. They land them in New York, don't even check their IDs. That's on the news. But then we're supposed to jump through all these hoops and have the NSA spying on us when it's supposed to be spying on overseas. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Only a nut would invite one's sworn enemy to come into one's house. You would not do that at your house. I would not do it at mine. Yet the leader of this country goes far out of his way to invite sure. people who are sworn enemies. Sure, I've had, sure. I've actually had my sworn enemies as a public figure show up at my house floor when I got kids. And I'm not a coward, but I do it smart. I close and lock the gate, I turn the lights off, and I tell the kids, you go right in here, and I, and I get out, you know what? Because I mean, people are just crazy. Open up your doors, come on in, and then cover up what they're doing. What do you think the end game is? We've got to change it. If we continue, we're going down into the, the, the valley of history. We must stop. You and I and every right-thinking, law-abiding American must take action. We must go to war for our nation. That's it. It That's is right. a war, and, and, and they know it's a war. I mean, I'll never forget MSNBC, multiple hosts. We put a tape together, you know, like three minutes of it. A bunch of their hosts, when it came out that the IRS had targeted tens of thousands of uh, 501c Christian, conservative, libertarian, uh, law enforcement, you know, uh, conservative law enforcement groups, uh, patriot groups, Christian groups, and, and, and some of them, they audited some of them, they arrested, harassed, took their 501c3 away, and then they went on MSNBC and said, these are racist Tea Party people, these are racist Republicans, they deserve it. Just broad brush, like they called you a racist, broad brush, all these tens of thousands of people deserve to be persecuted, way beyond anything Nixon ever dreamed of with the IRS, because you're bad. It's like Hitler saying, you're Jewish, so I can kill everybody because I say you're criminals. It is such authoritarianism to see them do that, Senator. One of the things that I love most about being black is that not many people can call me a racist. I can tell the truth about the president, about this administration, and but a few do, just a few. But rarely do I get called a racist. I love it. Well, I tell you, uh, uh, the racists that have been in there couldn't do what he's done. Doubled on un black unemployment. What do you think Barack Obama really thinks about the general public? Because he, he's gone to Africa and said, you can't have air conditioning in cars. That's a real quote, because he's on a red carpet as if prosperity's bad, and, and he tells poor Americans of all race and colors, you know, I'm going to help you out, but things get worse. What do you think his end game is? I think that if you, if you take his policies to their logical conclusion, we will no longer have a United States of America. It's, it's clear that it's either a lack of, of understanding of how history and, and nations work, or a desire to, to pull America down. Whatever it is, whichever it is, we must stop it. We, the American warriors, sure. must stop it. And that's why, instead of being at my house at this stage in my life, I can retire and go home and sit in a rocking chair, play with my grandbabies, but I must be on the battlefield because I owe it to my grandbabies to leave the American nation that I was born into that's right that's right i'm very i'm very very proud of the demographics of this show as we can look on google and see exactly who listens who comes all the rest of it it's much better than looking at arbitron ratings and radio and that gets you an idea but we are about 80 percent men it's great that we have women listening as well but if you look at the demographics it's men of every race color and creed but they are middle class and they're politically involved, and, and, and they're super voters. Google even has the numbers to show that our audience is the people the system is deathly afraid of. Men that are motivated, who don't want to be slaves, highly motivated people that love liberty, Christians, that threatens the system. And the, 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 to answer my own question, the White House and the, and the socialists before Obama have said, we want Cloward and Piven, we want a bankrupted economy, everybody dependent on us, push socialism so far it bankrupts the country to go into full communism. And that's what they want.
with rich elites offshore that administer the communism and are tax exempt.